Last time we spoke about Cartesian product. This time we shall speak about functions. You're familiar with functions and you ought to be familiar with functions because functions were introduced to you way back in grade 8 and from there on for every year level you were still talking about functions in your math subjects. Let us begin with a relation. So last time we spoke about Cartesian product and we defined your Cartesian product in this way. If you have two sets A and B, the Cartesian product A cross B, that is how you read it, is equal to a set of ordered pairs X, Y. It's a pair of uh, objects X, Y, wherein X comes from A and Y comes from set B. You call X the first coordinate, you call Y the second coordinate. This is a set of ordered pairs because you cannot just switch these two objects. Okay? So the first element or the first coordinate must always come from set A. Because this is how your cross product is formed. A cross B. So the first coordinate must come from A. And the second coordinate must come from set B. Your rectangular coordinate system is an example of a cross product wherein your ordered pairs are actually the coordinates of a point in your uh, plane. X is a real number, Y is a real number. So your rectangular coordinate system is R cross R. Let us give some examples of your Cartesian product. Let's say for example A contains two elements and B, these are the elements of B. So we shall list or we shall write a cross B. A cross B contains all ordered pairing of the elements of A and B. So 1, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1. What is a relation? A relation from A to B is a subset of your cross product A cross B. So any subset of your cross product is going to be a relation. The empty set is a subset of any set. So the empty set is a subset of your cross product. So this one is an example of a relation from A to B. This one is also an example of a relation from A to B. Okay, so it's a subset containing this pair of objects. So with this one and so with that one. So how many relations all in all do you think is possible for A cross B? Well, in order for you to know that, you must know how many subsets does A cross B have. Okay, so going back to our discussions on subsets, if the cardinal number of your set is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, it has 4 elements, then your set has 2 to the 4th subsets. So 2 to the 4th is 16. So this one is just a few or a few subsets of your A cross B or a few of the relations in your uh, A cross B. Function. So a function is a special kind of a relation. Look at that. It is a relation such that for each ordered pair x, y, the first coordinate x is paired to exactly one second coordinate y. So yes, a function is a relation but it has a special it is a special characteristic. The first coordinate is paired to exactly one second coordinate y. So let us go back to the relations I showed to you in the previous example. Let us identify which of those relations is a function. Is this a function? Is the first coordinate paired with exactly one second coordinate? Yes. So this one is an example of a function. How about this one? 1 is paired to 2 y coordinates. So this is not a function. How about this one? Okay, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Now look at this. Look at this element of, in your relation. Negative 1 is paired to 0. And at the same time, it is paired to 1. This one does not fit into the definition of a function. So this one is not a function. How about this one? 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Is this a function or not? Well, if your answer is it is not a function, that is because you are looking at the y-coordinate. 
and the y coordinate is paired to two different x coordinates. That is what you saw, okay? But this one is actually a function because our definition of a function is it is the first coordinate that must be paired to one second coordinate. And the first coordinate here, one, is paired to only one y coordinate, zero. This one, another first coordinate, is paired also to one y coordinate, which is also zero. So this is fine. This is fine. This is also a function. Our definition of function is defined from the point of view of the first coordinate, not the second coordinate. Functions need not be only about numbers. So any kind of pairing wherein the definition of function is met would be an example of a function. And we see a lot of this in the field of biology. Let's say, for example, in our classification of uh, living things, and we shall classify them into kingdoms. What we are going to do is we shall match, we shall pair the elements in this set, let's call this uh, set A, with its corresponding kingdom in set B. A, the set of living things, and B, the set of the kingdoms of living things. So that is your A cross B. Okay, so what is that? That is your mushrooms. And mushrooms belong to the kingdom of fungi. This one, the ants, are animals, so it is matched to the kingdom of animals. How about this one? So this one are your, okay, so let me bring back your flower, okay. So this one are, or is your diatoms, okay. You cannot see this with your naked eye. What you do is you get a sample of water from a pond, and then you prepare a slide, you put, them, you put it on a slide, and you look at it under a microscope. This is what you might see. These are called diatoms. These are microscopic algae. They are capable of photosynthesis. But you don't call them plants. You call them protists. That's their kingdom. Of course, you are familiar with the gomamella flower, one of the endemic and ubiquitous flower in our country. A gumamella flower is somewhere between a bush and a tree. It's a shrub. It's a woody plant, actually. It's a woody plant. It belongs to the kingdom of plants. Then, what else? This one. This one is your corals. And some of you might think that it is a plant. Okay, so when I first saw corals, I thought they may be plants, but they are in fact animals. They belong to the kingdom of animals. And in fact, when they die, they turn into these uh, hardened, sharp, pointed objects. Those are actually the skeletons of this animal. So this one belongs to the kingdom of animals. How about this one? Do you know what this is? Okay, so this is a micro microscopic organism. You call it the amoeba. And it belongs, okay, so let me go back. It belongs to the kingdom of protists. I chose this in this example because uh, my brother was infected by this microorganism. And this would cause serious gastrointestinal complications. Diarrhea, vomiting, fever, so on and so forth. I show this as an example of, of an animal in this set. Because the doctor who diagnosed my brother said something about amoeba that gets stuck into my mind until today. Because what the doctor said is something like this. Once you get infected by the amoeba, once it's been there, it stays actually there for as long as you live. What the medicines do is to suppress the symptoms. And so the symptoms disappear. But when your immune system is weakened, the symptoms that come from amoeba infection might appear again. So once you get the amoeba, the amoeba becomes your best friend forever. Okay, so functions. So we illustrated functions in that previous slide through diagramming. We can also show a function through a table. The first coordinate is paired to exactly one second coordinate. So for ants, it is paired with 
the kingdom of animals, mushrooms with the kingdom of fungi, gumamela with the kingdom of plants, corals, animals, diatoms with the kingdom of protists, amoeba with the kingdom of protists. We can illustrate functions in many ways. We can use the set builder notation to define a function. Set builder, set, that's the keyword there. So we are using the symbols associated with sets. We give sets a name. We use the equality sign to define the set. And we use the braces to collect the elements of your set. So you can define a function using the set builder, using your equation. This is a quadratic function using a graph, okay? Or you can also illustrate functions using diagramming. Or you can illustrate a function in the form of a table. These are the first coordinates, and these are the second coordinates. 